hello everyone in this video we are going to see how we can create a simple flux api now for this video you have to install this postman that allow us to send and receive requests and test our api and i am going to use this pycharm ce to do python coding of course you can use whatever ide for this I'm going to create a new project for this and I will say Flux API and then let's create it. Here we have our main.py file. So the next thing is I'm going to open the terminal of this location. You can go ahead and uh, right click this and then select open in select terminal otherwise you will see your terminal here in the pycharm and then what I will do just delete everything the demo code and then here I'm going to say pip install flask so it is uh, downloading and installed and the next thing will be to say from flask now I'm going to import here flask and then json if it okay i will come up to that later so after that i'm going to say app equals to flask now parentheses inside parentheses underscore underscore name underscore underscore okay now what is this code line in flask this flask parentheses and inside that uh, underscore underscore name create a flask application object now this underscore underscore name underscore underscore argument is a python predefined variable which is set to the name of the current model for example the name of the application okay now this create a instance of the flask class which acts a central object for handling requests and managing configuration it is the main entry point of a flask application and it is used to define routes views and other settings by assigning this object to variable called app here it allows us to use the instance of the flask application in the rest of our code and we can add routes and functionalities to it the next line of code will be at app okay this variable and we are going to specify the route here now we are going to code the route for root path that means forward slash for example if your website address is www.example.com this path will be for that root path now uh, inside this we are going to create a definition hello and then I will say colon inside that we can return some uh, text in JSON format that's why we are going to use this JSON if okay now this uh, JSON if is a method provided by flux that helps to convert a Python dictionary or list into a json string it returns a flask response object with application for slash json content type which can be used to return json responses from flask view functions now here as i told you i can say a dictionary here inside this key and the value now this key I am going to take that as message the next one will be the value will be hello world alright the next line of the code will be if a statement that check underscore underscore name is equals to this is string underscore underscore main underscore underscore now if this is true what i will say app dot run and i will say parenthesis here i will set this 
d bar is equals to true okay now this if statement is a common conditional statement used in python scripts it allows the code within the statement to be executed only if the script is run directly as the main program rather than imported as a module into another program in the context of a flux api this statement is used to specify that the flux app should run only when the script is executed directly and not when it is imported as a module into another program okay now what is this app dot run this is a method used to okay now what is this app dot run now this is the method okay what is this app dot run this is a method used to start the flux web application when call this method it is start the development server provided by the flask and it listened for incoming request all right now what is this app dot run it is the method used to start the flux web application and it call okay now what is this app dot run it is a method used to start the flux web application when call this method it is start the development server provided by the flux and it listened for incoming request on the local network now this debug equals to true parameter enables the debug mode which provides helpful error messages and other debugging information if the application encounters an error it is important to note that the debug mode should be turned off in production environments to ensure security and stability of the application okay now uh, here it shows us some warning that because each and every cases when we have these functions we should have two line of spaces here to define a new definition like this now to run this we can go ahead and open our terminal make sure you are in the current path where your file is located this main.py to find that you can use this ls command now you can go ahead and say python and then file name main.py otherwise if your id is support you can press this run button now when you run this you will see this uh, localhost address what you have to do just open your postman software and then here you will able to see what are the methods that you want to send here we are going to send a get request because this is a get request only and then here we have to specify the path currently this function is written for the root path that means we can keep the address only and then we have to uh, if we press the send button we will receive this message that sent to this hello definition you can see that is in json format okay now that's how to uh, send a get request we are going to see how we can send a post request okay uh, here I'm going to create firstly make sure you added two line spaces before you are going to create the new route I will say at app dot route parenthesis now inside this I will say the path as uh, calculate something like that all right now here I'm going to say a definition uh, function name as calculate parenthesis colon okay now let's consider we will have the user inputs so how we can pass those to pass those we are going to say a uh, new import code here which is request okay we must use that to receive request and pass those now here what I will say 
request underscore data the new variable is created and we are going to set that equals to request dot get underscore json as you saw uh, we are going to send a json request as this post message here so this body okay now after that what i will say uh, i'm going to ask what are the mathematical expression so here i will say this user underscore request is equals to request underscore data and here we are going to specify the key of our message that we are going to send here from this body section i will come up to that now select the post here and then make sure you are going to uh, set this header let me go ahead and show you as content hyphen type and then the value as application for slash json okay All right now here in the params if you are going to uh, pass your values to your post method it will not work that means we are going to send our body from here and make sure you have selected this row and then you have selected this json here and after that inside the braces we can type for example the key as uh, for example let's say expression and the value as i will set colon inside the uh, double quotations uh, 10 plus 20 divide by 2 okay now currently we don't have implemented the functionality here so here inside single quotations we can say expression here we will receive that key here okay this one now we can do some uh, calculation here i'm going to create a new variable called result set that equals to eval now this is a built-in functionality in python that calculate all the uh, thing inside the a string if that uh, mathematical expression it will calculate the result now here we can pass in this user request all right now we can return that to return that we can use this return keyword and then we have to json if json if i now inside parenthesis we have to say a dictionary and dictionary will have the key and the value okay so i'm going to send that as response the key is response and the value will be this result so we can say result all right now if you are carefully looking at this code you will figure out that it shows some warnings the first one is when you are creating dictionaries after this colon you must put a white space like this here also let's see missing white space after colon so what we had to do just put a white space and here as i told you earlier we should have two line spaces between definitions like this here we have two so error is gone now here we should have another line space so totally there are two line spaces okay the next one is when at the end of code we should put another line space because it, it shows this error no new line at end of file all right now the next thing is this is a post request now what we defined here is just for a get request to allow post request all we had to do just specify the second argument for this i will say after the colon methods but make sure you put a white space otherwise it should show you a error again 
methods equals to this square brackets inside the square brackets we will say post okay inside the single quotations now we can go ahead and run this let's open the post one and send our mathematical expression here inside the double quotations now we got the response as 20 all right now i know uh, this will be 10 plus uh, here we have this divide and then plus actually that's how expressions are working because if we want to calculate this 10 plus 21st we can put that in parentheses so result will be 15 days okay we got 15 now uh, we are not learning about maths here now if we say uh, 10 plus 100 we should get 110 right as the response now i hope this video helps if this video helps please subscribe thank you